The Auburn Tigers had several risers, several winners across spring practice, but did they do enough to win a starting job? Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blockerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining me as he does every single Monday, Lindsey Crosby, writer at Auburn Daily, as well as the host of Locked On MLB Prospects. Lindsay A Day is behind us, which means sadly spring practice is behind us as far as the Auburn Tigers are concerned. But I think there were several winners, right? We talked about this throughout spring, going into spring. Who could potential winners be? And I think we nailed some of these now that we kind of have a full body of work to look at. Lindsay, the biggest winner to me, and I'm I'm biased because it, when it comes to defensive backs and especially outside corners, but I just don't know how you could look at the body of work that Can Lee did over the last few months throughout Auburn spring practice and not label him as a potential uh, winner uh, of spring based on all the information that we were able to see in here. Yeah, I mean, even a day, a game where they threw the ball, I want to say something like six times total like 10 yeah yeah like, like like not a lot of throws i think ashford had like three attempted passes but one of them was a like the, the last one was a deep ball to the end zone that uh is targeted to landon king which both those two tall guys got a lot of passes but uh k and lee goes in there great play in the end zone and breaks it up and so like even even in a mostly running game format like a day was you still had a chance for Kane Lee to shine and it's really something where like like you you feel like you have three starting caliber outside corners as you go into the fall knowing that depth will always work itself out you can kick a guy inside it it's a good place to be and Kane Lee uh, came on the stage the dude who should be in high school right now and he looks like he definitely belongs on an SEC field and 12 passes. The quarterbacks are 5 of 12 passing. And Kay and Lee uh, was responsible for two of those seven incompletions. So that's that's certainly exciting to see. Did he do enough to win a starting job? I think over the course of fall and, and summer leading up to fall, I think there's a real chance that he becomes a real solid fixture. And he may not be like officially a starter, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. I still think Nehemiah Pritchett will start the season as the corner opposite DJ James, but it would not shock me if over the course of the 12 games of the 2023 season that Can Lee slowly gets more and more reps throughout the contest in each and every game, um, leading up to obviously, you know, the Iron Bowl at the end of the season. I, I just think we're gonna see a lot of him. And they may be creative with how they use him. We'll see. It sounds like in spring, he was pretty much an outside corner. It sounds like Pritchett was pretty much an outside corner. But I do think there's some versatility there, especially with Canley's foot, uh, footwork and feet and then Pritchett's uh, downhill speed. I think you can use both those guys in different ways if you really, really wanted to. The next one, Lindsay, another riser, clear-cut winner is Keldrick Falk. And there, we're, we're going to talk a lot of freshmen in, in this first segment here, Lindsay. But Keldrick Falk, I mean, the dude held his own. And I think a lot of the Auburn fan base was excited to finally see him this past Saturday at A-Day. And you probably had to like look at him a little bit, squint your eyes and be like, are we sure that this guy's a freshman? Because, man, he looks the part early. I need to see the birth certificate to make sure that he actually, it's not like a little league situation where he's three <laughs> years older than he says. Yeah, uh, No, it's physically like that. That's the big takeaway. And that's what I mentioned last week when you asked about guys who were excited to watch in, in, in A-Day was I wanted to see that he look physically like he belonged on the yeah. field. And for the most part, he did. Uh, he only made one tackle. He got ba Batty, Batty, not sure how to say it now at this Bad point. Tea. Bad T. Bad T. He got, he got Batty out, uh, like pushed him out of bounds on a drive kind of later, and they ended up not making the field goal either. So, you know, it, it worked, but was in mixing in with the first team. Physically looks like he belongs. Looks like he's starting to pick up the playbook well enough where he's kind of getting some of those instinctual plays yeah. more so than having to wait to diagnose what's happening and going out and making the play. So felt good about that. And it makes you feel like, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about this later, but 
Like your options are not just Elijah McAllister uh, for the Jack position. Which is what they need. Um, who's going to come in after them? As you, uh, as you just teased, we'll discuss that in a second. My, uh, my other guy that I want to mention, Damari Austin. And I, I think his play looks really good. I think it speaks for itself. But I also think, Lindsay, I wrote down this note when I was watching A-Day. And Daryl and I discussed it on our, our special pod that we put up yesterday. But I just wrote the note. It was a question. Is Damari ahead of Bad T in the depth chart? Question mark. And I think based on how carries were allotted in, in A-Day, mm -hmm. I think he is. I think he is. How much does that matter? I don't know. How much of you know how both of those guys are used is game plan heavy? I think a good bit of it, especially when it comes to, to bad team. If Hunter has to miss a game, God forbid, you know, for, for whatever reason, I think it changes that. Damari's probably your one, and Batsy's still probably your two um, in, in that scenario. But but still, yeah, I I think um I think Damari really, really apparently had an exceptional spring because Hugh Freeze couldn't quit talking about him after uh after the eight-day scrimmage. So props to Damari. Because look, Lindsay, I was pretty low on Damari going into mm -hmm. spring. I actually when when Cobb committed and all that was done, I asked the question, how does Damari get playing time with Jeremiah Cobb coming in? And you do it by having an incredible spring. Congrats, Damari. I apologize. I was wrong. Yeah, the quote from, from Freeze that I saw, uh, shout out to Justin Ferguson, Auburn Observer. Uh, Damari Olsen, I didn't give him enough credit coming into this job. He's had one heck of a spring for us, and that was Hugh Freeze. Ended up um, five carries, 43 yards. Team best, 8.6 yards per carry. Uh, you Delicious. Know, yeah. Bat Batty had four carries, 27 yards. One of those was for 18. One of Olsen's was for 20. So both guys able to make big plays, but it feels like, yeah, like he, like Demari Austin's the number two. If something happens, obviously there are scenarios you'll use Batty as the second versus Austin. But either way, very impressed. And like you said, I I kind of also wrote him off a bit and just thought, okay, well he'll be the guy. He's been very vocal about Auburn. He'll stay. He'll stick around unless he transfers for playing time. But he's not going to have a chance to be the guy. But Looks like at least going in, going coming out of spring, he set up for d a decent amount of work in the fall, and then at at the end of fall, theoretically, you're going to have Hunter who can go pro. You'll have Batty being done. He might be the guy, or he might be better positioned to compete with Cobb to be the guy next year. Yeah, you got to think the situation that Auburn has at running back. It's Hugh Freeze's goal to have that situation at every position on the field, where it's mm -hmm. like. I have to not play somebody that's really, really good. And that's, you look at the position groups that have been recruited well over the last few years, and it's running back and corner. And it's like, okay, we're good there. We're good yeah. there. Everything else, though, it's like, ah, eh. and it's really, really, really thin there. Uh, but yeah, props to Damari. Solid, solid job. But still, we're, I, I got a feeling Cobb's going to come on campus in the fall. We're going to be like, wow. How do you not play him either? So that'll be fun. The running back situation is in good hands. There's no question about it. Uh, the last guy I've got that I, I know you've got a few names that you want to share, Lindsay. The last riser for me is Austin Keys. We didn't hear a lot about him in the first half of spring. It sounds like something clicked, and he kept get, being given more and more opportunities. And they always rotated two linebackers in at a time. And over the course of the last two weeks or so of spring, it sounds like the ones were Keys and Steiner, then Keys and Woodyard. Then you saw some Woodyard and Steiner, but Keys was a really, really big part of that. And that's exactly what we saw on A Day. Made the first two tackles of the game. And I, I think um I think he's starting to feel it out a little bit. You certainly you certainly could see his athleticism and his kind of nose for the football. And so um props to Austin Keys. I mean, that's been a really, really interesting position group to look at. And like we still don't really know everything about it. Um, and I got a feeling some guys are going to possibly leave just because I think there's a lot of dudes on the roster for just two kind of spots on the field. So we'll see what that looks like. But yeah, props to Austin Keys. I've got him as a riser and I've got him as a starter right now going into summer. And and on that same note, I have Woodyard in there as a guy who it feels yeah. like it clicked for him. And if you think about some of his history, he had an injury late in high school. And so he was kind of behind the eight ball when he got on campus, didn't get on the field a lot last year. And it feels like He's more active in 
the actual defense versus special teams and things like that. Uh, had a great play on a, a swing pass. Batty uh, gets the ball. Woodyard's right there. He read it early. Yep. Made his way through traffic. Makes a tackle for loss. And it's it's those type of instinctual plays, the things where I'm not sitting back and waiting for something to happen and reacting to it, mm-hmm. but I'm understanding what's going to happen and getting in position to make the play. Like That's the kind of thing I feel like Auburn's missed from the linebackers for a while and then specifically just kind of missed in general from some of the positions on defense. I liked what you're doing that. And so I feel good about him. I've got him as another big riser there as well. And I think that Keys Woodyard group could be good for a couple of seasons for Auburn if everything clicks right. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. And then, you know, can Tolan come around? I think that's the next question. What exactly did that, does that look like? And look, Jason Jones came on the show on Friday and talked up Eugene Asante and his, uh, and his reps. Eugene, I thought, looked pretty good as Five well. Tackles, another tackles loss. Yeah, good for him. Good for him. Uh, another another name that I that I meant to to write down, uh, Messiah Nasili Kite. Uh, I mean, he's not going to be an official starter, but he's going to play as much as the starters because he can play defensive tackle and he can play defensive end. We saw him more defensive end than I was expecting to on mm-hmm. Saturday. So that's another name I wanted to kind of give some love to. Do you have any more risers slash winners of spring before we move on? Another guy I mentioned last Monday, Marquise Gilbert. I mm. thought looked pretty good. You know, was getting some buzz. Had a had a tackle for loss again yeah. on Batty, uh, but just another guy. We you know we talk about the safety depth on this team, and that's another preview for later. I think Gilbert had a better a day than some folks expected, a better spring than some folks expected, and gives Auburn some more options on the back end. Right, right. Uh, okay, what position groups will Auburn be targeting in the transfer portal? Obviously, quarterback will be one of them. What other potential starters are not currently on the roster? We discussed this in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays. They are back, and there's no better place to get in on the Major League Baseball action than FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Locked on to sign up. Place your first bet and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you do not win. Once again, FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. Lindsey Crosby, I think the quarterback position still leaves a lot to be desired. I do think what we saw Saturday and even TJ Finley's remarks to the media afterwards, I think the TJ Finley era at Auburn is done. I think that's behind us. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, Robbie's the clear number one guy right now. You you had to trot him out there with the ones. TJ never got a drive with the ones. Holden Gurner did. And I think that's some kind of messaging that we're sending, uh, that, that Hugh Freeze is sending out to folks. And so I think you're going to have a quarterback leave, and I think they're going to want to bring two quarterbacks in, Lindsey. That is my gut reaction I think you're going to see two quarterbacks added to this roster during that transfer window that starts on April 15th. The advantage of being open to taking two quarterbacks, and this is still a little bit from later, but if a if an SEC quarterback transfers to Auburn, they are not eligible to compete in the fall. That is a, a conference rule. So being open to taking two quarterbacks means you have options going forward as far as who the guy is after this season, you can go get someone and you know, with the clear expectation of hey, you don't have to like you can just spend the fall getting better, you can spend the fall working out, you can spend the fall sharpening your game, and you'll be in the competition in spring. You'll be healthy going into spring, ready to go. But it definitely feels like like TJ Finley's going to uh going to be gone. It was something he took the the mental health break last year to kind of learn more about who TJ Finley is and things like that. He, uh, as I understand, he's on track to graduate this spring so he can transfer with, uh, without, uh, sitting out for a year. And I fully expect that that's going to be something that happens. Even if Auburn does not get two quarterbacks in the portal, I expect come April 15th, you'll hear something soon from TJ Finley about entering the portal. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. And, And it may be reactionary. He may wait until a quarterback, 
comes to Auburn, and then he may hop in. We'll certainly see what that looks like. But I'm expecting two quarterbacks to enter the portal. Uh, wide receiver. Wide receiver was the most disappointing part of what I saw on Saturday. Daryl agreed. The way uh, the face you just made sounds like you, uh, you, you. It sounds like you agree too. Not to not to make that statement for you, but you've got to figure something out there. And I don't know if it's scheme and more repetition or what, but it just didn't look right, Lindsay. Yeah, they were it, not going to say forcing, but they were making a point of emphasis with with no Camden Brown in the game to throw to both Landon King and Nick Mardner. I think combined Camden they got, played with the twos for a little bit. Oh, that's right, he did. Um, I think that like they had three like three three targets each to King and Nick Martin. I want to say they each got one pass. And when Landon King got the ball, I know it was late, I know it was wet, but physically, Landon King didn't look very impressive. Didn't look like he had a lot of burst. Didn't look like he had that speed in the open field. I think he got ran down from behind. It just felt like it was like underwhelming. It was underwhelming. And so I can absolutely see Auburn going out and trying to target a high-level wide receiver target that can come in and play right away. Somebody experienced, maybe somebody who's got one year of eligibility left and is trying to polish their game for the NFL, something like that. Because it just, like you mentioned, it was it was disappointing. And it makes me, like I legitimately am thinking about, okay, who's going to, who's going to do this in the fall? Like who are we going to be able to count on in the fall? Yeah. And I think they feel good about Javarius Johnson. Mm -hmm. I think they feel good about Camden Brown. After that, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Talking to players, they thought Tarvarish Dawson was the most consistent throughout spring. And that's a dude who, like, when we had the media viewing windows and they were doing, like, the three deep in pace drills, Dawson like didn't even do those. And so we're like, oh my gosh, like walk-ons are getting reps in front of them. So who knows, man? Who yeah. knows? But I think I think Dawson, Dawson had the best catch of the day. So good for best him. Best catch on the best throw, a 39 yard uh pass that kind of down the seam by mm -hmm. Robbie Ashford. It's that same thing as in the Iron Bowl. Like, there's that pass where you're like, okay, okay. Not to go back to the quarterbacks, but like, okay, he's got it, he can do it. Right. And then you see the pass before and after that were both broken up and were incomplete. And and Tavares yeah. Dawson looked good on that play, but like you said, he hasn't stood out a lot and the production hasn't been there on the field. And so like you need you need more guys. Now, what are the odds you can go get an impact wide receiver low in the spring? Low, low. especially and like and then once you do that, you have to get them on campus, which will be, I think, June at the earliest, probably. And then they have to get chemistry with whoever the starting quarterback is going to be. I think. I think I, I feel comfortable with the recruiting them. It's just it, is a guy like that going to enter the portal? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. The only way I could really see that being, I think, the most likely scenario of that is some dude that's like really feeling himself, and he's just like in a small, small school in a small conference, and it's like, okay, maybe this guy can be good, but I don't know. I I, I just I think that's. I think that's the most concerning position group right now. I thought it was linebacker. I feel a lot better about linebacker over the last week. So we'll see. There are three more position groups that I think Auburn will go out and get transfers to either bolster the depth of those groups or add starters. And also, you know, what are the, what are the ramifications of this? What's the trickle down? I mean, it's going to impact a lot of folks on this roster, and I'll explain what I mean in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Lindsay, I think Auburn is going to have to add depth pieces to the offensive line. And I'm going to be curious to see how they make this pitch. I think you can pitch competition for one of the guard spots, left or right guard. I think you can pitch competition there. If you can get a guy that started for several seasons somewhere else, I think you can pitch that because I think, I think they can find somebody better than like Tate Johnson or Connor Liu in his current state, right? I think the upside of Connor Liu is tremendous, but I think you can find a guy that's better in 2023 than those guys. You could probably find somebody that's better than Jeremiah Wright as well. But once again, I think the upside of all those guys is tremendous, but we'll see how they play that. But pitching depth to like a tackle spot, curious to see how they do that. Well, I think part of that too can be you say, "Hey, we have Gunner Britton, 
We've heard, like, Connor Britton's a super senior. Either way, he can't come back. We think he's going to make it to the NFL. And then behind him, we've got an Azavian Miller, who's running with the twos. Yeah. We've got, you know, uh, we've got Dylan Wade, who is who will be who is draft eligible. So if if we, if we can get Britton there, we think we can get Wade there too. I mean, there's you have to convince a guy, right? There's not the obvious playtime thing. You have to convince a guy, but I do think that you have so many upperclassmen in this room between, uh, you know, a uh, uh, Jeremiah Wright, the Britain, Avery Jones being a senior, Miller being a junior, and so many of the uh, of the depth is either freshmen or sophomores. True freshmen, you know, Whedon, Joiner, Lou Johnson, uh, yeah. you know, redshirt freshmen like EJ Harris. Mm-hmm that you can go out and get a guy who's been in college for a year as well, who looks promising yeah. and might be in over his head. If he's the sixth offensive lineman and you have to, or the seventh offensive lineman, and you have to play him because two years, two injuries. But I think that's an option as well. Find a guy who can compete for a starting spot and can find a guy that's promising that you can use in an emergency, but they have the expectation of we're going to get two or three years out of this guy down the road. I think that's a more realistic option than finding day one starters when it comes to spring offensive line. Sure. Uh, I think the position group where we may see the most impact via the portal in terms of 2023 production could be the Jack linebacker spot. Because Mm -hmm. I don't know... I don't know how you're happy if you're Dylan Brooks. I've said that all spring. And I think with what we've seen from with, the Elijah, with Elijah McAllister and Keldrick Falk at the jack position, there just seems to be this massive, massive gap between those two guys. And I guess I guess Dylan Brooks is after that. Maybe Brent Williams. I don't know. Maybe the freshman Brent Williams. So I don't know exactly how you deal with that. I think this is the easiest pitch from Hugh Freeze to make to any kind of Jack linebacker or edge player that enters the portal because you're going to play. You're going to mm-hmm. play. You're, you're not going to start probably, but you're going to play. And that should be, that should be enough. Yeah. Elijah McAllister, the difference in him and other transfers we've had like Eku Leota is McAllister to me feels like a good complimentary piece as a pass rusher. Like if you have a guy, if you have a stud, that guy is the starter, and McAllister is an experienced veteran who can be behind him. Yep. Um, the obvious comparison is to Bragg last year, where Bragg comes in, you've got Hall, you've got Leota as your one and two. These are your studs. Bragg is a is a a, a perfectly Marcus Bragg is a perfectly competent number three that can rotate in. And when you have an injury, he stepped up and performed kind of maybe better than you expected. Yeah. And that's what Elijah McAllister feels like to me. And right now in this room, Elijah McAllister is the number one. He is the guy with Keldrick Falk behind him. And then, like you said, a lot of drop off to get to everybody else. I do think there's a likelihood based on the points you just made, Dylan Brooks may find his way to the portal. And so you're probably looking at having to bring in multiple jack slash edge rushers, as well as maybe move somebody from the linebacker room into an edge rushing role as well. It's just, that's just years of kind of recruiting that you've, you've not necessarily done as well as you needed to do. Nope. I think that's it. I definitely think that's what it comes down to. Then the last one is safety, specifically uh, safety with guys in the inside of the field in the defensive back room. Uh, I just, I don't think there's been like a clear merger there after Zion Puckett and Jalen Simpson. And so I I think they're going to hit the portal for a, for a guy to play safety as well. And that seems to be kind of the, the talk in the locker room as well, which is somewhat telling, I would think. Yeah. I mean, you have options back there like an Austin Osbury, Marquise Gilbert, but it's just, like you said, nobody's really stepped up and taken the job and giving you confidence that, hey, Zion Puckett's on his last year here. He'll be out. Yeah. Um, you know, who's going to be the guy behind him? Nobody stood up and said, I am the guy. And you can't go into into uh, fall camp knowing you have a senior, you have Donovan Kaufman as a junior, and then behind that a bunch of question marks. You've mm-hmm. got to have it's kind of, it's kind of like offensive line where you've got to ha- you've got to at least know 
who that sixth and seventh guy are. Safety, you have to know who that third and fourth guy is. And if you don't know by now, at the end of spring, you have a third guy and maybe a fourth guy, you've got to go get somebody to be those because of injury concerns, Mm -hmm. overuse, depth, that kind of stuff. I won't spend a whole lot of time on this. We'll probably do like full shows on this, but we're about to see a very interesting part of the year when it comes to the roster management of Hugh Freeze's Auburn Tigers because this is not counting guys who've already entered the portal. And so the two linebackers that entered the portal, unofficially, some places had Auburn at 91 scholarships, some places had them at 92. So right now, they're probably either 8 or 9 or 90 with those two guys leaving. You got to get to 85. So if you had no one through the portal, which we all know isn't going to happen, you had no one through the portal you need five to seven guys to leave, depending on what they've got. We don't know the official stuff with like Levant and um, Sean Jackson. Like, do those guys have scholies or not? I think they do, but we don't know that, I guess. It's not like public information what Auburn scholarship numbers are at. Yeah. But you're going to see five or six guys have to leave anyway once the summer starts. And so if Auburn's going to add eight or nine guys to the portal, I mean, we're about to see double digit guys enter the portal over the next few weeks. And that's going to be wild. Yeah. And a reminder to everybody, in case you missed earlier in the show, the portal period has been moved up. It is not May 1st, like a lot of places have reported. Like just about everybody has reported all spring. Yeah, we all kind of missed that. Yeah, they made this change late last fall and nobody caught it. But April 15th Mm. through April 30th is the window. You have to be in the portal by April 30th. You don't have to commit. You just have to be in the portal by April 30th. And the thing to know about here, again, I mentioned this earlier in the show, if you are an SEC player, you cannot transfer inside the conference and be eligible in the fall. So if you're looking to try to find a safety or an edge rusher, you can't go grab a guy from a Georgia, from an LSU, and plug him into the lineup. Yeah, so when a guy enters the portal, you know, quit hoping for Brock Vandergriff or anything like that. Like if a guy in the conference enters the portal, don't be like, oh, Auburn needs to go get this guy if you want him to play in 2023. Lindsay, how can people check out all the stuff that you've got going on, man? I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. That's the hub for everything, whether it's the show, Locked in MLB Prospects, whether we're going to get your podcast on YouTube, uh, whether it's the Auburn Baseball writing, auburndaily.com, or mm. it's the Braves writing, mm. bravestoday.com. You can find all my written work at auburndaily.com and bravestoday.com as well. And we will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn. <laughs>